today our project will be graffiti name art. Graffiti is writing or drawing on a public surface. Here's an example. Street art is painted in public with permission. Here is an example. Graffiti. Is it art? Is it legal? Pause and discuss. In this video, I'll show you how to use graffiti lettering to make your name. We'll be using a pencil, a Sharpie, some colors. You could use colored pencils, crayons, whatever you have, markers. And then I also will be using two sheets of paper. My first piece of paper is a practice sheet. I'm going to go ahead and divide it into four parts by just drawing a line down the middle and a line across the middle. In the first box, I'm going to write the word art. You can write your name if you wish. I'm going to try to make the letters interesting and in this case I'm doing all capital letters. I'll try to do kind of something a little bit different in the second square. If you wanted to, you could do your capital letter and lowercase letters. I chose to stay with capital, but try to make it a little bit different from my first square. Now, for each one of these, I'm going to try to make them a little bit more interesting. So these are what, what are called tags, which are just lines. Now I'm going to move on. This next section, I'm actually drawing my same lines again, which is the tag, but now I'm going to do what's called the throw, which is making letters that you could actually fill in with color. You may think of something like a block letter or a bubble letter. I'm doing this by kind of going outside of my original lines, trying to kind of make block-like letters. I'm going to go ahead and do that with each of the letters in art. And you could do this in your name. To kind of create areas that could be colored in. This is the block form. So I have all sharp edges. Now I'm gonna go ahead and draw my second tag from above. And that one, instead of doing block letters, I am going to do more bubble letters. So instead of straight lines, I'll have more rounded or curved lines to create kind of a bubble effect. I'm going around each of my letters. Notice that my letters overlap too, and that's great for kind of giving some depth to your lettering. So it's great to have letters close enough that they can overlap each other. All right, I'm gonna look at these two and decide, hmm, which one do I like the best? And that will be the one that I choose to do for my final piece. I'm thinking I like the more block look than the bubble look, so I'm gonna go with that for this project. I also like how the letters kind of come from different angles. Now before I move on to the final, I'm thinking, okay, how can I make this even a little bit fancier? So I've got the tag, which is the lines. I've got the throw, which is kind of adding those shapes that you could color in. The next step is called piece. And this is where you take the letters and you make them look more 3D. So you give them perspective, you make them overlap. So in my case here, I've added a light source to the top left so that I remember everything that's away from that light source is gonna get a little bit of shadow. So I'm going in to the side and the bottom of each of my letters and adding a shadow or a shaded effect. And that will give my letters some Form. So it makes them look like they kind of jump off of my page. I'm going to go ahead and do this on each of the letters, really trying to focus on you doing the right side 
and the bottom side or edge of each of my letters so that I'm consistent and so that it makes sense. I'm liking it. All right, I can show you on the bubble letters too. These ones, as you can see, are a little bit more rounded on the edges, so they don't have the sharp edges that the block letters do, but they kind of curve just like the letters curve. And again, those two need that same to the right or to the bottom edge shading or shadow to make them look like they pop off of the page. Now that I've done my practice round, I'm gonna go ahead and move on to my final one. I like the left side better with the sharper points, so that's the one I'm going to choose for my final. Again, you can start off by just doing the lines, making that tag. I'm gonna draw a little bit lighter with my pencil this time so that I can erase these lines later. And I do want my letters close enough so that they will overlap once I add the outline. And big enough too so that they have a nice presence on the page. Now as I add the outline here, I can kind of play around with the shapes of some of my letters. For example, my ends here are a little bit wider than I originally drew them. They kind of pop out a little bit more. Or you could even add extra curves or extra angles in your lines to make them more interesting to look at. All right, all of my letters are overlapping. I'm really happy with how that looks. Now I'm going to use my Sharpie and I'm going to trace the lines that I have to make a really solid outline of my letters. taking my time trying to make my letters nice and neat. Now I'm going to go ahead and add the shading part to really make my letters pop off the page. So I'm again, I'm sticking with the same side which is kind of off to the right and then we'll probably add a little bit to the bottom edges of my letters as well. You can make this part as fat or as thin as you want, it just kind of depends on how much you want your letters to stand off of the page. I'm coloring this in with my Sharpie. I'm using black for this entire thing. If you have different color Sharpie that you would rather use, you can do that as well. I just really like the solid black lines.
All right, next I'm going to add and kind of an outline that goes around my letters. This is a really nice piece that'll help make it easier to add kind of a background later and it'll give it some interest. At this point too, I'm also gonna add some drips of paint. So this is optional. If you'd like to add some drips kind of coming down from your piece, you can do that. I chose to make them black. Um, you could even leave them open and add color inside of them later. I also thought it would be fun to add a couple drip marks on my actual letters as if this were actually on wall and paint was dripping. All right, now you can see I am adding some color. So I added a couple more details on the outside of my letters and the outside of my outline and now I am going in and adding some colored with colored pencils. The color is really up to you. It's kind of fun to use a couple different colors. You can see here I am mixing kind of some blues and some greens. I have obviously sped it up rather quickly so that it um, will give you an idea, I guess, of what I am doing. I decided on this color scheme. Um, I love kind of blues and turquoise. This is my, my favorite color, so I kind of went with my favorites and just thought it'd be fun to kind of blend in. Notice as I, I'm kind of overlapping some of my colors with my colored pencils, so the colors kind of blend from one to the other. All right, I have also added some color around my letters and right now I am blending it. So I added yellow first and now I'm kind of going in and adding a little bit of orange just to kind of give it a little bit more depth and interest. Okay, so I could just leave it like this, but I think it would look so much cooler to actually make it look like it's on a wall. So to create a wall type shape, I'm going to do um, some brick work by creating some horizontal lines across my picture. Now if you need to kind of use another piece of paper or a ruler to make your lines straight, you could do that. I am just kind of eyeballing my lines and hoping that they are straight enough. Um, when drawing bricks, I draw the vertical lines across one section and then the second section right below it, um, the lines go right in between the bricks above it. So you kind of draw these lines right in the middle of the two vertical lines in the, the section above. And to color these bricks in, I'm going to kind of push hard along the lines and shade kind of close to the lines and then just color in lightly um, on the inside of the bricks. And I wanted to make them interesting enough, so I'm going to use a couple different colors to kind of help them stand out. But you're basically just kind of um, going around the outside of each rectangle and then kind of lightly shading in the inside of each rectangle. And once you do that to each brick, they really start standing out. Now I could have just left them red, but I thought it might make them a little bit more interesting to kind of add in some other colors. So I'm also going to use a little bit of orange and color that in the middle of the bricks just to kind of lighten them up a little bit. And then I thought, man, I'm lightening the, the center. Maybe I'll darken kind of the cracks and crevices between the bricks. So I'm using a little bit of blue to go kind of in between some of the bricks just to kind of darken the areas inside. And you can see now that I've colored all of my bricks, I'm going back in and adding some blue in between all the little cracks and crevices to kind of make my bricks really pop and give a little bit more contrast to my background. Now my name art 
um, hat can really stand out from the background. It looks really cool, um, it has kind of a fun style to it, and hopefully you can really have fun with this and make yours look super cool as well and uh, make your own unique individual gra graffiti style name art. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe below to get more of these fun tutorials.